Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm talking to you about handling the narcissist smear campaigns, what you can do, what this means, what it looks like, what it feels like, and ultimately how you can handle the smear campaign. This is something that you should absolutely expect to uh, encounter when you're dealing with a vindictive narcissist. This type of narcissist is going to be um, overly about control. All narcissists are after control and manipulation. They, they use these things to get their ultimate end goal, which is a certain type of persona, a certain type of um, uh, belief or outlook that other people have about them, regardless of if it's true or not. They're always after that. And so the um, the vindictive narcissist is going to use a smear campaign, especially when they're unable um, to assert control in a certain area. A lot of times with my clients, you'll I'll see this uh, pickup or this increase when a court order has gone not in the narcissist's favor or even what they just assumed or thought that they would be worthy of. So if the court order doesn't give them exactly what they had wanted or what they thought that they should have, then um, the smear campaigns can increase. Um, so this is a fairly common thing and it's important to be prepared for it and know how to handle it. One of the goals, before I get into the smear campaign, one of the goals that the narcissist is going to use through by launching this campaign is to get you to react to the, uh, to the campaign. I have a video where I talk about the difference between reacting and responding. And if you don't know the difference, please go check out that video um, so it can help you understand more about what I mean by this. When you are uh, dealing with a narcissist who's engaging in a smear campaign, they're not only doing the smear campaign to kind of taint other people's opinions about you, they're also doing it because they're hoping that your uh, reaction to the smear campaign is something that they can then use against you as well to kind of further their, their agenda uh, and their goal of what they're actually after. So um, so it's really important that you understand this is two, twofold. Uh, it's not just about getting other people to not like you or think less of you or um, think that they're the victim, right? And win them a lot of sub sympathy and support, but it's also because they're wanting to trap you. They want to use that smear campaign to trap you. And by the way, if they're successful at this, it's not going to matter what they said in their smear campaign about you. So it's really important that you're wise about what to do when a narcissist is uh, using the smear campaign against you. So let's talk about what a smear campaign is, what it can look like. Um, a, a lot of people, and especially in today's day and age, we think that it's the narcissist saying uh, different things on social media to people or making comments um, on social media posts. This is all certainly part of it. Um, even to people that you know personally, um, like in, in actual life, not on online life, um, you know, telling other family members um, lies about you or your friends, mutual friends, especially things like that. That is part of it. What the narcissist can also do is use um, use the court proceedings against you. So if you're in a, in a court uh, situation with a narcissist, it has absolutely occurred where the narcissist will kind of send people snippets of the court proceedings, whether this be um, uh, something that the judge ruled on or a testimony or uh, some sort of filing. And people who aren't aware of how the court process works can take whatever the narcissist sends them as the gospel truth or as the end all be all, right? So if I, if I have a snippet, for example, of the judge saying, I'm ruling on behalf of whatever the narcissist's name is, the, 
the person who receives that could think, okay, they won. You know, everything that you've been saying is a lie. This this person has evidence to back up their truth and things of that nature. This is um, especially devastating when um, the narcissist does things that are illegal or unethical or haven't been uh, proven yet. So uh, two examples really quick. One of the things is, is that most people know if you're in a court proceeding, you can just file an affidavit whenever you want. You don't really even need a reason to do this, but that's not an official thing in the, it's part of the court records now, but that doesn't mean that that thing was ever verified, that there wasn't a written motion response to it, that the, that the court even took it into consideration. However, an, I've absolutely had it happen where um, the narcissist has written an affidavit, filed it with a court, and then proceeded to distribute that affidavit to um, their friends and family members of the other person that, th that was in court, one of my clients. And so the people who don't understand about how court works or what an affidavit is, then they of course take this as, okay, this is what's true. Look, it's official. It's been filed with the court. It's been notarized. It has all of the trappings that make it appear official. And like I said, gospel truth. While yes, that's now a part of the official court filings, that doesn't mean that that has any weight or any bearing in the court at all. And we don't even know if there was another uh, like a response to that to that affidavit ever filed. So that it, we're we're literally seeing only half at best of the picture that that affidavit can be um, can be uh, depicting. The other thing is that I've had it before as well, where narcissists fall. Uh, false police reports, false claims to the police, whether about domestic violence, trespassing, what have you, that have no substance, they're going to get thrown out, but the narcissist does it just so that they can have the evidence, you know, to, to uh, uh, move forward with their smear campaign. And this is really important, again, to, to know that this is absolutely something that narcissists will do, especially vindictive ones, ones that are uh, very, um, cannot take defeat, cannot take um, any type of control or even perceived defeat or control being taken from them. So this is something that, you know, you need to prepare yourself for because like I said, it's not just going to be the barrage of phone calls of people wanting to verify, you know, or or explain or um, even just condemn you for the evidence that they've gotten from the narcissist. It's also about how you re react to it. The narcissist is hoping you do something that, that further validates what they have already been saying to other people about you. See, this person is unhinged. This person has been uh, harassing me. I've always been the victim. They've always tried to make me look like the victim, and now look what they're doing. And um, and again, people who aren't aware of what narcissism is or what narcissistic abuse is, they have only seen one version of the narcissist the entire time that you've known them. Um, and so it's can it can be very um, um, hard for for a third party to um, see the the narcissist as anything but the victim. So it's important for you to recognize that this is a tactic. This is something that the narcissist uh, could possibly engage in. Um, so what to do about the smear campaign, right? Because it can take many different forms and it can come in different waves and phases. Maybe it's just online harassment for a while. Then maybe it's like dropping uh, certain phrases or pieces of information to people that you know in real life or you're, uh, maybe they start harassing you at your work or calling your work or showing up at your church or doing any kind of thing like this in person, right? But then if it gets escalated to where they're, um, where they're taking, where they're using the court process as an actual way to um, to further their smear campaign, you, you know, you need to know how to handle this stuff. So first of all, um, you, 
if you're in court with a narcissist, you need to make your attorney aware of, of the fact that there's been a smear campaign going on. You, your attorney is going to want to try to help you formulate a strategy on how to bring this to the forefront because this will show uh, not only character but but alienation as well. And so if you're making a best interest case um, in your situation, you are definitely going to want to have this um, all documented and um, and let this be a building block of your case. Sometimes what happens to people in, in court situations with a narcissist, it looks really bad on the outside, but it's actually turning to a blessing if you can endure the stress of having everything taken from you, uh, being being questioned about your own character, your own behavior, seeing your kids uh, go through very difficult situations. It's a really difficult process. And uh, by no means am I saying that this is correct or this is the right way to do it. In fact, it's not. Um, I'm saying if you can endure, there is something you you will end up with what you want at the end of the process. If you can endure it, you will and, and you do it correctly, you are um, you are not uh, too pushy with your agenda and you, you so you re- recognize that there needs to be some restraint in your behavior and some patience on your part, but it, also that you aren't um, you aren't lackadaisical and just assume that the court is going to see it all and know it all and rule in your best interest, right? That's not true. You're going to have to do some work to um, to present your case to the court. Absolutely. So it there is a there's kind of a balance of knowing what to do and the right time to do it in. So when it comes to the smear campaign. Make sure your attorney is aware of it if you're in court, especially because what you can start to do is compile evidence and even um, you can start compiling evidence of the smear campaign and even uh, um, find people who are willing to see this for what it is and testify or or, uh, write a statement on your behalf about this occurring. So... While you need to ignore a lot of it, you can't come back and be, um, uh, you know, very um, rash when you're talking with the narcissist about the issue or whatever. And in fact, I would not mention it to the narcissist. You don't need to tell them you know what they're doing or, you know, so and so told you what they had said or whatever. It doesn't, that is not helpful. And it's also unnecessary. So what I am talking about is in your own private time, documenting this stuff, making sure your attorney is aware of it and helping you develop a strategy. Number two, if the narcissist does use the court system to further kind of utilize their smear campaign against you, you need to recognize that they will start doing motions. They will start filing legal um, proceedings based on their... Um, desire to do a smear campaign. When this happens, that's especially when you need to have a very good strategy in place. Uh, If they file an affidavit, like I just had mentioned, like stating such and such a thing happened to them and or whatever their um, their perspective on a situation is, it's important that you know your rights too, because as much as you need to overlook and ignore during this time, you also need to know when it's time to step in. You can file a response to that affidavit, which is now part of the court records, um, uh, just like the affidavit is. And also, if um, if they are stating things like on such and such a day this happened or this happened and in the past they did this to me, ask for ask for the evidence. Tell them that you would like, it's it's called a, a request for production. Uh, you need to tell them you want the evidence of such a thing. Otherwise, you want the court to strike it from the record. And these are things that you can do legally. Um, when you are going through the process, though, and especially if you weren't expecting it, it can be very jarring 
to uh, to see people who you've known your your whole life for a very long time kind of turn on you or not stick up for you or doubt you. And that's another part that you're going to need to be prepared to uh, face is that some people who you started the process with or who have been your friends or been your support system up until this point will turn their back on you. And um, for that reason, I I want you to know that it's okay and you should seek out help, people who can help you get through this, people who can help you understand how to process your emotions. Um, because again, it's important that you do connect with your emotions, that you are aware of how you're feeling because when we try to push emotions away, we not only don't deal with them, we're storing them up so that they can kind of all come out all at one time. And that is exactly what the narcissist is hoping you will do. That is exactly what they want you to do in this situation. So it's, you know, it's, it's important for two reasons, you know, one for your own mental health and then two for your, for your case or for your situation with the narcissist, that who you are actually does get a chance to come out right you want to use this opportunity to um to respond to the situation and not react to it so um get, getting professional help if necessary getting um those who you can trust around you who can help you process your emotions who can help you think about things from a different perspective you know i've talked a lot about perspective and how that will literally shift your entire um, case and also your outcome with the narcissist. You have to believe it first before anybody else uh, will get on board with your vision. So if you th if you are not dedicated to the outcome of your case, then nobody else is going to be either and you've already decided what the outcome is going to be then. So it's really just important that you have people who come around you who remind you that when these smear campaigns start, it's the it's a true sign that the narcissist is getting to the end of their rope in terms of like what's available for them to to do and use against you. Narcissists who use smear campaigns are um, are are pushed into a corner where they are they are sensing they're going to lose more territory and this is their re this this is their reaction to the potential of losing more so what seems as like it's getting worse for you is actually evidence that the narcissist is losing they don't have many things left in their arsenal you know and if you can endure this you can figure out how to use this uh, to your benefit in this situation as well. So another perspective is super helpful to, to have during this time. Finally, like everything else that you've gone through already with the narcissist, keep your why in mind. You have to have your end goal always before you. You know, why are you going through this process with the narcissist? Why are you leaving? Why are you leaving now? Why are you uh, going through all of the nonstop harassment that you've endured up until this point? You need to remember your why, because if you can remember and reconnect with the reason of of why you're still on this journey, you it will help you keep your focus right? We're not going backwards, even though it feels like, hey, this is getting worse for me. Uh, and like it was more comfortable back there. We're not going backwards. We're moving forwards. And what actually looks like, you know, in other words, the steepest part of the hill is the closer to the top. Okay. It's getting harder to get to the top, but that's because you're almost at the top. So you need to have the why you've started, why you're leaving the narcissist, why it's now, why the time is now for you to leave and things like that. If you don't have that why before you, you'll lose sight of what you're doing. And again, you don't want to have come all of this far to just come as far and lose what, what the narcissist, you know, has already given up. You can endure the smear campaign. You can endure it. And ultimately, while it's hard, it doesn't matter what the narcissist says about you and it really doesn't matter what other people believe about you. If those people 
believe the narcissist, those aren't people that you want to try to convince to stay with you anyway. Those aren't people that you really want to try to convince that they need to be in your court and with you and you know on your side. Those people have already chosen whose side they're on. Let let them make their own decisions. Let people make their own choices. And even if it means you have to go alone, it's worth it in the end. It 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 truly is. But you're the only one who can decide when, how, and why it's the right time to leave the narcissist and to be free and what price you're willing to pay to get free from the narcissist, you know, ultimately through this whole thing as well. So you have to decide that for yourself. But I can say without a doubt, it's better when you're free. So I hope this has helped you understand what a smear campaign is, how to handle it, why the narcissist uses it. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.